In this video, I'm going to talk about adjusting entries and specifically the deferral category of adjusting entries. A deferral occurs when the cash is received or paid in the first period, but the recognition of the revenue or expense doesn't occur until a later period. And so our two categories of deferrals are prepaid expenses, where expenses are paid before they are consumed, and unearned revenue, where the cash is received before we perform our service. And so when we're looking at the prepaid expenses category, you generally speaking, the payment of the expense lasts for more than one accounting period. And so we're recording the cash in one period, and the recognition of the expense is occurring in later periods. And this most often occurs in areas such as buying prepaid insurance, buying supplies, advertising costs, um, rent when you are the tenant, the one paying for the rent, and even buildings and equipment are a form of prepaid expenses. So let's look at some examples. Here is some prepaid insurance. On October 1, Cubit's company paid $2,400 cash for a one-year insurance policy. So on October 1, they bought the insurance policy, and October 1, they would have recorded a debit to prepaid insurance and a credit to cash. But now, at the end of October, basically one month worth of insurance has expired. It's been used up during that month, just through the passage of time. And so we need to record an adjusting entry to show that that insurance is being used up. And so our adjusting entry would be a debit to insurance expense and a credit to prepaid insurance. And then we can see here that my prepaid insurance, which started with a balance of $2,400, would go down by the $200 and now has a remaining balance of $2,200 in that account. And so we would repeat this process, do the same adjusting entry at the end of November and December and for the next 11 months until we show that the whole insurance policy has been used up. And of course at that point it's time for them to buy a new one and you start the process over. Let's look at supplies. Pioneer Advertising Agency purchased supplies costing $2,500 on October 5th. So on October 5th, they bought $2,500 worth of supplies. So on that date, they would have debited supplies, credited cash, right? And this supplies is an asset. Then it tells us that on October 31, they did a count and they see that they still have $1,000 worth of supplies on hand. And whenever you see those terms on hand, that basically means that those are the supplies that are sitting in your supply closet that you have not used. So we need to adjust our asset of supplies down to this $1,000 because that's the amount of supplies they have left, which essentially means then that they've used up $1,500 worth of supplies during October. And so our adjusting entry then would be a debit to supplies expense and a credit to supplies. And so my supplies asset now would have the ending balance of $1,000 which matches the $1,000 worth of supplies that are still on hand. And so in our supplies, we always do our adjustment for the amount of supplies that were used during the period. Now let's talk about depreciation. When we buy buildings and equipment and vehicles, those are assets, right? They go on our balance sheet. But even though they last for multiple years, they do still get used up over that period of time. And depreciation is the process of showing the using up of those assets over what we call the useful life. The useful life is just how long we think we're going to use those assets in our business. Okay? Depreciation is not necessarily the same as the change in the street value or the resale value of the buildings, the equipment, the vehicles. It's just an accounting tool to show that we're using those in our business and that those are causing an expense, a cost of earning our revenues. So let's look at an example. Rush Company purchased a machine for 5,000 cash on October 1. So on October 1, they bought this asset. They would have debited equipment, they would have credited cash. Now, as they're using this machine, we need to record depreciation. And so the problem tells us that our depreciation is $480 per year. So then we can assume that it's $40 per month of depreciation on our equipment. And so our adjusting entry to record our depreciation is a debit to depreciation expense and a credit to accumulated depreciation dash equipment. Now this is a little bit different than the other ones because we're not directly decreasing our equipment account. Instead, we track it in a separate account called accumulated depreciation. 
Okay, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. That means that in my balance sheet and in my accounting equation, the accumulated depreciation account sits up there with my assets, but it's contrary or the opposite, so it increases with a credit instead of a debit. And so in our balance sheet then, you would see the equipment of 5000 and then right below the accumulated depreciation of the $40, which would show us what we call the net book value of our equipment. Book value is the cost, the original cost of the equipment or the asset, minus the accumulated depreciation. Now let's look at unearned revenues. Unearned revenues occur when you receive the cash before you provide the service. So our cash is coming in in one period, our service is being performed, and therefore our rec revenue is being recognized in a later period. Unearned revenues can occur with different things. Um, rent, if you're the landlord and your tenant pays for the next six months of rent, then you would have an unearned revenue. Um, airline tickets, when you buy your ticket from the airline, uh, you usually are buying them well in advance, so the airline has unearned revenue until they provide you that plane ride. Magazine subscriptions, customer deposits, anything similar to that can be an unearned revenue. So let's look at an example. Pioneer Advertising received $1,200 on October 2nd from a client for advertising services to be completed by December. So it's October, November, December, three months worth of advertising that this customer has paid for. So on October 2nd, they would have debited cash because they received the cash, they have to record it, and credited unearned service revenue. Then, during October, they're going to provide the advertising services. So we need to show during October that they used or they provided $400 worth of services and therefore now can record the $400 worth of revenues for the advertising. And so our adjusting entry then would be a debit to unearned service revenue and a credit to service revenue recognizing that $400 of revenue that they've now earned. And so after our adjustment, we can see that in our unearned revenue account, we still have $800 worth of services that we are required to provide to our customers. This unearned service revenue account is a liability. It is not a revenue account. It is a liability because we owe them some services. Okay, so in review, our deferrals happen when cash is received or paid in the first period, and then we are recognizing the revenue or expense in a later period. And so generally with our deferrals, you have one journal entry that occurred in period one, and then the adjusting journal entry occurs in period two. I hope this helped clear up some of the deferrals for you. Be sure to check out my other videos on why we do adjusting entries and the accruals as well. Thank you.